Hey, what's up guys? My name is Nens, and about a year ago now, I had made a video on how to set up Splinter Cell Chaos Theory for streaming via widescreen fix. And in that video, I had asked you guys to leave a comment uh, down below to see if we can figure out how to get multiplayer set up since Ubisoft had shut down the servers that were supporting that game. And, um, you know, no one left a comment on the video uh, that I made before about the uh, multiplayer. And like, I get it. I Like who wants to play Splinter Cell at Chaos Theory in 2020? Am I right guys? Like it's probably a, it's a dead game. You know, it's like, I, I, I can take a hint guys. Like I get it, I get it. Like no one wants a video about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So obviously today we're gonna make a tutorial on how to play Splinter Cell Chaos Theory in 2020. Let's go guys. So unfortunately the widescreen patch that we installed in the last video actually ruins multiplayer. So unfortunately, I know it fixed so many problems, but unfortunately we cannot use it to play multiplayer, which in turn actually makes it very difficult to stream multiplayer. So if you guys were hoping to stream multiplayer, it's actually very difficult to do. You can, but it's not ideal. I'll show you how to do it later at the end of the video. Uh, but for now, you can't, either you or your partner that you're gonna be playing with cannot have the widescreen patch installed. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'm gonna start off showing you how to delete those files just in case you don't know how to get rid of them. And then we'll hop into the setup. So unfortunately we must uninstall that widescreen fix, which I'm a little sad about because I actually really like the patch, but it must be done if we wanna play multiplayer. So let's open up Steam, go to Chaos Theory, right click, go to Properties, go to the Local Files tab and go to Browse Local Files. From there, we're gonna open up our system folder. And if you guys remember last time, this is where we installed the patch files. Unfortunately, or I guess fortunately, I got a new PC, so I actually don't have these files installed, but I do have the folder that still contains them. So. Those are these guys right here. We're gonna find those files in our system folder and delete them. Um, if you wanna go the extra step, you can go to verify integrity of game files just to make sure everything's cleared out. You don't have to, but what's more important is that we go down to the Splinter Cell 3 user configuration settings. We're gonna open up this guy and we're gonna check our field of view. So even though we deleted the patch files, it doesn't mean that it changed our field of view back to default. And that's what verifying the integrity of the game files might do, but it's not guaranteed. So I still recommend that you go in here and change it manually. So right here where it says FOV, you're gonna make sure that both of these values are 75.0. You're gonna hit file, you're gonna hit save, and your partner must do the same thing. If your guys' field of view is not the same value, the default value, it will not work. So make sure that both you and your partner change this value as well. It's stored in one more spot for some reason. Um, you have to go to your C drive. You're gonna have to go to program data, which is a hidden folder. So you're gonna wanna make sure you hit view and check hidden items. Go into program data, go to Ubisoft, go to chaos theory and click on the same folder or the same file. And you're gonna go down to where it says FOV and make sure that both of these values are also 75. I've tested it both ways where I've had the patch and my partner didn't have it, or we both had the patch. And even if I had the patch installed, I changed the field of view value back to 75 and it still didn't work. So I saved you guys the troubles of testing this and trust me when I say it doesn't work. So just delete the patch files and change your field of view back to 75 and that is the guaranteed way that it'll work for some reason this game is old and finicky kind of like sam fisher so you know that's just how it is but um one more pro tip you should go back here and go back to the general tab and go to set launch options and type in dash no intro all one word and all lowercase what this is going to do is skip that annoying intro sequence at the beginning of chaos theory that's unskippable and it lasts like 30 seconds it's really long so if you're going to be opening and closing the game a lot and testing this out it's going to help you uh, speed up that process by skipping the intro the next step is to install the program that we're going to be using to 
emulate a virtual LAN environment, and that's called Zero Tier One. So we're gonna open up the main homepage. Um, I'll leave a link for that in the description down below, but we're gonna go to download and we're gonna go down to the MSI installer for Windows. We're gonna go ahead and save the file. Um, I have yet to download it actually, since I told you guys I built a new PC. So we're gonna be doing this process together. So what we're gonna do is open up that guy that we just downloaded and it's gonna tell you that it's an executable file, blah, blah, blah. And then we're just gonna wait and have the install wizard set everything up for us. So we're gonna go ahead and click install and wait for the installation. There we go, it's done. All right, cool. So once it's finished, uh, we're gonna open up zero tier one. It's actually installed down here. So you're gonna see zero tier one in your taskbar tray. Um, and this is all this is. So this is, this is everything, that's it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so the way that this is, works is that the program's installed on your computer, but it doesn't have like an interface. You actually have to go to the online version of zero tier one. So we're gonna actually go back to the download page. And from there, you are gonna see step one, step two, and step three. So obviously it says create a zero tier account, which is super easy to do. So you're just gonna click on this and it's gonna open up this page. Go ahead and register. It's gonna bring you to this page once you log in. Just ignore all this. Obviously we're not gonna pay to play Splinter Cell Chaos Theory in 2020. We're not doing that. <laughs> So don't worry, this is completely free. Uh, but what we want to do is make our own network. So we're gonna click on the network tab. Uh, let's go ahead and create a network. It's gonna randomize a name for you and your network ID or whatever. Uh, trust me when I say there's numbers here, I'm gonna have everything blocked out just for safety. Um, but for you, there will be numbers here. Right here, there is going to be a network ID. And then also at the top, it has your network ID and the name of this uh, network. You can rename it if you'd like by just typing in a new name. New name, there you go. It's now named that. Um, you wanna make sure your access control is private. Obviously you don't want this to be public information. So, you know, just be safe about what you're doing. Uh, but what you're gonna do is leave everything at default. Don't worry about changing any of the settings um, here. It's not, we don't need to get super complicated about it. Trust me, it gets complicated quick. All we're gonna do is copy our network ID and we're gonna go open our zero tier one app that's in our uh, taskbar tray. And we're gonna click on join network and we're, we have to join our own network. So just make sure you copy that network ID, paste it in and click join. And you're gonna notice right away if we scroll down first, it's gonna prompt you to connect to a network. And then you're gonna scroll all the way down. It might take a minute for it to show that a device has joined this network, but now it says that it has. So, and this device is me. So right here, you can see all it shows is uh, an address number and that's my PC being connected to this. Um, it's not very descriptive. I would recommend actually putting in a name like me. Um, and every time a friend joins, you might want to name them as well. So, but the most important thing we need to do here is actually to authorize ourselves to use this network. So it says authorize question mark and you click the box authorize. So now we're authorized to use this network um, and you're going to have to do the same thing for your friend that joins. So what you're going to do is copy and paste the code, the network ID up at the top and you're gonna to wanna to send it to them. They're gonna follow the same exact steps. They're just gonna open up zero tier one, click join network, paste it in. I actually have to go do that on my brother's computer in the other room. So I'm gonna go copy and paste that real quick and be right back. And you guys will see that his uh, PC will show up on the network as well. So now that I've added him, I can scroll all the way down and I can see that there is a new device connected. Um, it's unnamed again. So what we're gonna do is type in bro, and we're gonna go ahead and authorize it by checking the box. And now both of us are connected to the network. Uh, what we're gonna do is make sure that we're connected by clicking on the zero tier one and uh, making sure we're connected to the right network. And it does say new name. I know it's cause I named this new name cause I'm so creative. But now that we're both connected to the network, um, there is one more step that we need to do before we can start playing. What we wanna do is type in network in the search bar and just click on network status. What we wanna do is go to change adapter options and you're gonna see you now have a zero tier one network. We're gonna right click on that guy, go to properties and we're gonna to go to IPv4, go to properties there 
And in the advanced tab, we're gonna uncheck automatic metric. Yours will be checked. So uncheck that guy and change your interface metric to one. And both you and your partner need to both change this to one. So that's very, very important. So just make sure you change it to one, hit okay, hit okay again and hit close and that's all you need to do. And now we can test to see if this has worked. All right, so to save you guys a bit of time, I actually just tested all of this and I concluded that the game capture in OBS does not work. So the only way to capture footage with Splinter Cell Chaos Theory multiplayer or just without the widescreen patch is to use display capture. And so what I had to do is um, go to properties and actually unclick capture cursor because for some reason the cursor capture was also messing with it. So you guys aren't gonna see my cursor right now, but it's just so that I can show you that this is playable and that we can use OBS to capture the footage, which means it's streamable, I'm pretty sure. So I am haven't tested it for streaming yet, like with OBS, like capturing uh, streaming footage, obviously this is just a recording. Um, but I am very excited to try that out next. So um, it's still a possibility, but what we're gonna do is open up a new co-op game. So I'm gonna go into co-op, I'm gonna go to LAN. Uh, this time I'll create the game and I'm gonna make sure we're not on the training mission. Um, we're gonna go on Panama. So we're gonna go ahead and hit create game. And then um, I'm going to go into my brother's room, have him join the lobby, and then uh, we're gonna see if the game crashes. So I'll be right back. All right, awesome. So he was able to join my lobby, no issues. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and launch this and we'll see if the game crashes right now. Oh, so, would you look at that? It didn't crash. Wow, I'm impressed. I'm actually impressed. Um, let's see if all the, let's see if the night vision works. Ooh, the night vision works. Oh, I forgot there's these guards over there. Um, no one panic. Um, I can I can fix this. We're invisible now. Nice. Um, so yeah, it looks like the night vision works. Uh, looks like the thermal works. I don't know about the... Oh, the EMF works too. Very nice. Wow. I did not expect that at all. Because um, previously, when you try to open this at all, even with display capture or game capture, uh, the game would just crash. But now... I think you're able to get around it by using display capture and then turning off uh, cursor capture. So that's actually very cool. I did not expect that at all. Um, let's see. Let's see if this works. Like I wanna make sure everything works. So let's see if we can grab this guy. I know it might set off the alarm or whatever, but let's just see if we can grab him to make sure that all the interactions are working. <laughs> There's shooting at my teammate. Bro, how is that not? No, die. So well, that was scuffed. Um, oh, this guy's gonna I'll just shoot him in the PP. All right, nice. Uh, we survived, nice. Um, anyway, so uh, ignore the bad gameplay. The, the, I was just trying to make sure that the interactions work so that I was able to grab them and everything was working with the, uh, the hook running, which it looks like it does. So I'm actually very, very impressed. Um, it looks like you might be able to, I, I haven't, like I said, I haven't tested this while I have OBS like streaming, but so far we're capturing um, like footage just for recording seems to work. So I imagine it would work the same because I mean, you're just capturing the display, right? Um, but yeah, it looks like everything's working. So that's exciting. So at least you can play, if anything, at least you can play multiplayer. Um, but for now, it looks like this is all working. So I did want to mention that this also works for the versus mode and not just the co-op. So there is the potential for streaming or recording a full lobby of spies versus mercenaries. Unfortunately, I don't have enough friends that own the game to actually test that out. I might be able to, with just like me and my brother, be able to test like a spies versus mercenaries just to see if it works. Um, and then I did want to show you guys that there is a Steam community page that actually has a a lot of improvements for Splinter Cell Chaos Theory, and I'll leave this in the description down below as well. Um, it goes over a lot of things that we went over, like the skipping intro um, and stuff like that, as well as having uh, versus mode downloadable map packs, which is insane. Like there's custom map packs you can download. Here they all are. Um, so that's something I might be able to do a video on in the future if you guys are interested. Um, but for now, we're able to play co-op, which is still pretty cool. That wasn't so bad, right guys? 
Um, I actually <laughs> had a lot of fun recording this video. I'm so happy. I just get so excited every time I get to play Splinter Cell, especially co-op. Like those are some of my fondest memories as a child. Uh, so I hope to see you guys out there like streaming on Twitch every single day playing co-op or playing, you know, single player, no matter what it is. As long as you guys are out there playing Splinter Cell, it's going to make me happy. So um, I hope this video, you know, helped you out. I hope it was easy to follow and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one.